Airtable is an all-in-one database management system, and unlike many other complex and overwhelming platforms, Airtable offers a visual and nimble experience for managing teams, projects, CRM activities, and more. And in this Airtable tutorial, I'm excited to share how you can get started, navigate through, and leverage many of Airtable's impressive features so that you can organize, manage, and automate many of the different areas in your startup or small business using one dynamic database. Okay, so before we go ahead and launch into this updated Airtable tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip your small business with the tools, knowledge, and skills to help you thrive online. And with that happy note out the way, let's go ahead and dive into Airtable. Okay, so before we dive into Airtable, and if you're yet to set up an Airtable account, simply head over to your browser and type in Airtable.com, or feel free to click the link in our description below this video, and that's going to take you here. Now, I want to quickly mention prices. You can use Airtable completely for free using their free plan. They also have a Plus, Pro, and Enterprise plan. And the main difference between each of these plans is the account quotas for each inclusion, like extensions, integrations, automations, records per base, attachments, and more. Now, in my opinion, the free plan is more than sufficient enough for many startups, micro and small businesses for teams of five or under. And if you realize you need more out of Airtable, you can always upgrade at any time. The great thing about Airtable is you have access to a 14 day free trial of their pro plan. And you will be automatically downgraded unless you decide to upgrade to this plan at the end of this trial. Okay, so like I mentioned, for those that do not have an Airtable account, once you've arrived on the landing page, simply navigate up to sign up for free, navigate through the simple steps to setting up your account, and you'll be taken inside Airtable. Okay, so as you can see, I've arrived inside Airtable, and for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm going to use a completely fresh Airtable account. Now, when you first arrive inside Airtable, you'll have the opportunity to upgrade to the Pro Trial, the 14-day free trial of the Pro Plan. And that's going to bring you to your first workspace. And like I mentioned, within your workspaces, this is where you can manage a group of databases. These are called bases. And within our default workspace, we have the option to create a database, a base from scratch, or we can quickly upload existing projects into a database. And next to that, we have the option to choose from a pre-made template. And like I mentioned, databases inside Airtable are called bases. And this is where you can manage your different projects. So think about the type of database that you want to create. For example, if we click on start with template, here we can see some template examples of a database. We could create a database for business development CRM, customer testimonials, sales pipeline, sales org chart, and then we can explore more templates down here. If we go ahead and click here, and that's going to open up this collection of database templates. If we navigate up to the top, we can search for a specific template that we're after. We can also navigate down to browse category, or we can select popular templates and navigate through the popular templates. If we want to see more templates, we can simply navigate down and click on see all. Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to navigate back over to close, and we're actually going to create a database, a base from scratch. But the first thing that we want to do is rename our workspace. To do that, navigate over to these three dots over on the right hand side, then come down and click on rename workspace. I'm going to call this workspace client projects and I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to navigate over to start from scratch and create a base from scratch. And that's going to take us inside our first database. Now, just quickly, we need to understand the structure of our Airtable base. First, within our base, we have tables and these are used to group rows or records. And these are similar to spreadsheets and we can create multiple tables across here. Then within tables, we have rows. These are essentially records and rows or records are used to store independent items. And next we have column fields. And this is where you can add relevant details about your records. Next to that, we have different views and the different views allow us to change the way that we view and manage our data within our database. 
Then we also have extensions. If we navigate up to extensions and then come down and click on add extension, these are essentially visual dashboards to help us analyze and take action on our data. Then if we exit out of extensions, we have automations up here. And automations allow us to streamline our systems and enhance our productivity through basic or advanced automations. Okay, so let's navigate back over to data. Now I'm gonna navigate over here and get rid of this and then get rid of this section here. Now, just quickly before I get back to this video, I just wanna mention my all-in-one digital playbook that you guys might be interested in called Go Digital Now, the ultimate small business playbook. This dynamic book took me a year to create and is ideal for small business owners, new and existing, that are looking for a clear-cut digital roadmap for setting up the right tools, systems, activities, and strategies so that you can absolutely dominate online. I will add a link in the description below this video if you wanna learn more about Go Digital now. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back to this video. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is customize our base. To do that, we're gonna change our base name, and this database is for our local business client projects. Then we can come down and change the appearance color if we like. I'm gonna navigate over to yellow. We can also change the icon, and then we have a base guide down here that we can follow if we like. All right, I'm gonna click out of here. Now let's go ahead and change the name of our tables as well as add additional tables for our database. Now the structure of your tables are like spreadsheets and they're used to group your records. So think about how you want to structure your database. For example, our base is for local client projects and I'm gonna go ahead and add three tables. These are gonna be web design, content development and marketing campaigns. So if I click this drop down here, I'm gonna come down and click on rename table and call this web design. Then hit save and navigate up to the next table. And here I have a few integration options or I can create a blank table. I'm gonna go ahead and click create a blank table and name this content development. And with each of our tables, we can choose what we're labeling our rows. So at the moment, our rows are records. If I click this drop down, and depending on the nature of my database, I could add project, task, event, request, or any of these other ones down here. I'm gonna leave record for now and then come down and click save. And the last table that I want to add is marketing campaigns. And as you can see, the rows within this table have been labeled as campaigns. Again, I can change that if I like, but I'm actually happy with campaign. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Now I'm gonna navigate back over to my web design table. And now within our tables, we want to add our rows. And remember, if I click on this drop down and then click on rename table, I'm gonna come down and then search for record and then click on record. So I want my rows to be records and then click save. And another example of using your tables is let's say you're using a CRM, custom relationship management system with Airtable, then each of these tables would be different parts to your CRM. For example, you could have contacts, accounts, leads, your sales pipeline, tickets, and dashboards or something else. So again, depending on the type of database that you want to create and manage inside Airtable, you can do so with Airtable. And you can also play around with the different templates to see how you can manage the different areas in your business. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate down here and quickly add three different web design projects. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added three records. These are three website design projects. Now, if I click on expand next to each of these different records, you can see all the information associated with that record. And this is based on your column fields. So if we navigate back over to exit, you can see the different column fields up here. For example, if we navigate over to assignee and click here, I'm gonna click the drop down and then click my name because I'm the only user that's part of this database at the moment. Then if I click under status for this record and click the drop down, I can come down and add my own status type or I can choose from a predefined status. I'm gonna navigate up to to do. And as you can see with our column fields, we only have four. We have the name of the record here, notes, assignee and status here. Now, if I like, I can click here, click the drop down and I can edit the field if I like, and I can change this to something else. For example, I can navigate down to URL, and maybe I can call this current website. I can also add a description. I'm gonna navigate over to save, and now with each of these columns, I can also expand these columns if I like. I'm gonna navigate down and add the example website, and then click out of here. Now, if I wanna add an additional column, all I need to do is click here, and let's say I wanted to add subtasks. All I would do is navigate down to long text, then click on enable rich text formatting, and I'm gonna call this tasks. So each of these web design projects for our local clients 
are going to have specific tasks that need to be completed. So I'm gonna navigate over to create field and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to move this across here in front of status and I'm gonna add the first task which is brand colors and that's the first task associated to this record. I'm gonna navigate over to formatting and I'm gonna come down and select checklist. Then I'm gonna hit enter and add a few more tasks. And as you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and added four tasks associated to this record. I'm gonna click out of here. And now if I click on this task here and click on expand, you can see the different subtasks or tasks that I need to complete in order to move this web design project through my different stages. Okay, so I'll untick these for now. And let's say brand colors has been completed. I'm gonna exit out of this. Now, if I navigate over to this record and expand, you can see those tasks down here. Again, you can add another field to this table if you like from here. Simply add the field name, come down and choose the formatting options. This could be a date, for example. I'm gonna name this launch date. And then I can choose the date formatting if I like. I can also add a description, I'm happy with this, and then click save. Then I'm gonna navigate over here, and let's say this project, this web design project, is due on the 17th of July. I can also leave a comment if I like for my team to view, and then I'm gonna navigate up here and click exit. We can also navigate across and click here to add another field. We also have formula, click on formula, and here we can add specific values and create a formula. Now what I'll do is create a standalone tutorial focused on how you can use formulas inside Airtable. However, if you wanna create a custom formula, this could be based on your budget, marketing allocation, or anything that you want to use a formula for. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this, click cancel, and I'm just gonna navigate up here and quickly fill out these other two records. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and quickly added the appropriate data for each of these records. Now, as you can see, I've added an additional user here. Now, to add a user to your base, simply navigate up to share, then navigate down and make sure that you have base all records selected. And here you can invite via email, you can create a link, or you can share publicly. Now, I wanna add a collaborator to help me manage my records inside this database. So I would keep email invite selected, then I'd come down and add the email. I can also add a message if I like. Then it's important to navigate over to this option here. Creator is currently selected. This allows the individual full access to configure and edit this base. If I select editor, this individual can edit records and views, but not configure tables or fields. Now the free plan that Airtable offers allows you to collaborate with up to five creators or editors. And then all Airtable plans allow for unlimited commenters and read only users. So you can allow for an external or internal user to comment on records and create personal views, or you can select read only where the individual can only read the data, they cannot edit or comment. So what I would do is click on editor if I wanna add another team member to help me manage my projects. And then I would simply add the email and then click on invite. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this. And next, like I mentioned, we have views on the left hand side. So if we navigate down to the different views down here, let's say that we wanted to add a Kanban view. All I would do is click here. Then I can choose to name this view if I like. I can also choose who can edit this specific view. I'm happy with collaborative. And then I'm gonna come down and click on create new view. I'm gonna navigate up here and click got it. And here you can choose the grouping field and this will determine how your Kanban view will be displayed. For example, I'm gonna navigate over to status and click here, and that's gonna display the Kanban view like this. I have uncategorized, to do, in progress, and complete. Or I can navigate down and I can click on assignee, for example, and as you can see, we have two team members that are part of this project, or this table, Emma and Stuart. We also have the option to create a new single select field, or we can create a new user field. I'm gonna navigate up to status and then come down and click done. If we navigate across, you can see we have new stack. We can add a new stack if we like, or we can customize each of these different stacks. I'm happy with that. I also wanna navigate down and click on calendar view. I wanna add a calendar view and click on create new view. Again, we need to choose or create a date field. I'm gonna come down and click on launch date. So this is the date when this specific web design project will be launched. I'm gonna go ahead and click here and then click on done. And as you can see, I now have three different views that I can navigate between. I'm gonna navigate down to calendar and you can see we have a nice calendar view here. 
Now I can navigate up here and I can share this view if I like. I can create a link view that I can share with external users, internal users, stakeholders, and others. I can also sync this data with an external calendar, or I can embed this view. Maybe this is a public view and I can embed this on my website. Let's say if it's specific events that I'm managing and I want to display this on my website and show website visitors specific events that are coming up. So you can essentially manage any type of database that you can think of inside Airtable. Next, we want to talk about extensions. So let's go ahead and click on extensions and come down and click add extension. Remember, these are essentially visual dashboards to help you analyze and take actions on your data. So I'm going to navigate down and click on pivot table and then click on add extension. And here we can select the specific table. We can choose the view. We can choose the row grouping, the order type for this pivot table, as well as the column grouping. I'm happy with status and then the order and summarize by. I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and click on done and then exit this. And as you can see, I have this on the right hand side. And this is a visual representation of our Kanban view. We can add additional extensions if we like, and that will allow us to view our data in a dashboard visual style, allowing you to make decisions based on the visual data. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of this. Next up, we want to talk about automations. If we click on automations, here we can manually create our automations or we can navigate down the left hand side and we can choose from a default template. For example, I'm going to go ahead and click on send an email. And as you can see, this is a basic automation template that we can use. You can see up here the trigger is when a record matches conditions, if status is done, then the action is an email will be sent to Stuart. Now, if I navigate over to properties on the right hand side, you can choose who to send this notification to. It's going to me at the moment. If I navigate down, I can add a subject. I'm happy with this for now. And then I can also add the message down here if I want to change this default text. I can also add attachments and then generate a preview. If I navigate up to the top, this is where I want to name this automation. I'm going to add project complete notification. And when I'm happy with my automation, all I need to do is turn that automation on. And as you can see, our first automation project complete notification is turned on and active. To create another automation, simply come down and click on create automation. I can also add to this automation if I like, and I can test the automation and run history if I want to preview the history log of this automation. Okay, so I'm going to navigate back to data. And what I'll do is create a more advanced standalone tutorial that will dive deeper into automations, which I'll link down below. Now with each of your tables, as you can see, I don't have any data in these other two tables that I've created, but you get the idea. What you can also do is link databases. So one of the powerful capabilities of Airtable is the relational database between tables and records. If I click on add field, I can come down and click on link to another record and I can choose web design, for example, and I can add a name and this specific record will link to the table web design. Again, I'll talk more about linking records and tables in a more advanced tutorial. Now, something else I haven't mentioned yet is if I come down, discard this, I can also come down and click on form and create a form. This is going to allow us to collect data externally to bring into our base. So if we come down and click on create new, that's going to allow us to create a form to collect data and we can embed this form on our website and we can also take the link and share this across our different channels. And you can customize the form the way that you like. You can choose the types of fields that you want to display that you want to add on your form to collect and bring inside your base. And last but not least, I want to briefly talk about integrations. If we navigate over to our profile and click on integrations, this is where we can integrate third party tools and apps. If I click on connect new account, this is where we can connect other popular tools and platforms with our Airtable account. However, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this beginners tutorial, helping you get started with Airtable. Again, I'll add a more advanced tutorial for those that want to make the most of Airtable to manage all their different databases. And there we have it guys, that is it for this Airtable tutorial for beginners. Now if you have any questions about Airtable, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.